Our hippos are about to mate. That's awesome, but I'm not going to watch that. That's a little bit. That's their own private business. Oh, and they're expecting offspring. They're pregnant. That's fantastic. But lots of little hippo babies. I love it. But what we're going to be doing this episode is going to be big because this, oh my goodness, this is the building that we're going to be working on. It's going to go all the way from here, all the way to there. And that's just the internal structure. But uh, you guys have seen it. Uh, we're going to be building a hippodrome. And uh, oh boy, this is, this is going to be the biggest thing I've ever done. And I'm expecting frames per second to absolutely tank after this. But enough of this. Let's go right into the time lapse. In retrospect, I'm recording this after having completed editing the video and having built this danged hippodrome. This project was extremely big. The last video I published was on December 23rd, and it is now January 15th, and I have been working on this danged hippodrome the entire time. And granted in there there was an unfortunate update to Windows 11, which I undid, but in all this time I've been working slowly, steadily on this thing. This is easily the largest building that I've ever created in any video game, and I'm quite proud of it. But one of the things you might be asking is, why why the Hippodrome? This is supposed to be Alexandrian, it's supposed to be this, and Hippodromes are more associated with Romans. Yes, but we also know that at least 800 BCE, there was a Hippodrome in use at the, in, at the original Olympics in Olympia, Greece, and I figured... If there's that kind of uh, hippodrome, then Alexander might have one too. Alexander was extremely fond of horses. He got that love from his father, Philip, who, which literally means lover of horses in Greek. And so I figured Alexander might build a hippodrome at his zoo. Now, this is a very Roman style of hippodrome. The Greek hippodromes didn't have the arcades all around and these kinds of things. They're basically just terraces built into hills. But that seemed kind of boring. So I decided to up the ante a little bit, make this massive, massive building that I could really be proud of, that could really act as one of the focal points of this entire zoo. And I think I succeeded. Um, there was a lot of little finagling in, in being finicky with a lot of these things, placing these columns, placing those arches across, but all in all, I think it worked. And one of the things I was really afraid of when I was designing this was that just using the color of the limestone, the natural color of the pieces in game, would create a very drab look to it, which is why later on you'll see me adding the bright red, the bright yellow, the Spartan colors into the Hippodrome. Because I figured if we have the blue and the white over near the hippos, the classic Greek colors, the Athenian colors, this one might be a little bit more Spartan. It's the reds and the yellows and these kinds of things. So I was just trying to differentiate everything that was going on. Um, and I also used this technique that's used a lot in Renaissance architecture, where the ground floor is three units high, the second floor is second is two units high, and the top floor or each subsequent floor is one unit high. It's not quite a three to one ratio for this hippodrome, but each floor does get smaller. It's it's almost a foreshortening kind of an effect, but it does give the lower levels a lot more air. Uh, and lightness to them otherwise it could just feel very heavy and very plodding um, so I'm really really proud of this there's something about repeated arches that's just I mean whether it's whether it's an aqueduct or whether it's a bridge or whether it's a building like this or just an arcade there's something about repeated arched forms that just speaks to me and if anybody's wondering, by the time I'm finished, this this hippodrome has more than 5,000 pieces. Once I add a couple more things, once I add the, the arched end to it, um, and once I'm satisfied with the overall building, this will be going 
on the Steam Workshop if you are at all interested in downloading this. But, uh, oh boy, that's a lot of finagling. I had over seven and a half hours of game footage to reduce into this video. Um, and that's even including the fact that I completely forgot to record about three hours and my OBS crashed when I was recording uh, another section. So if you see massive gaps, we're just like, what, what, what happened? Did I miss something? No, it's just because I forgot to record it and that's on me, but OBS also crashed. So that's on OBS. <sighs> but looking back at this now, I'm, I had very specific goals with what I wanted to do and I think I accomplished them. I mean, yeah. Okay. The gorilla might've been, that has no business being on a Greek or Roman building, but I corrected that later with the lions and the hinds and the hippos and things like this. Later on in this video, we will get to me putting in the animals. Uh, and I chose the Indian rhinoceros, the rhinoceros unicornis. And rhinoceros literally means one horn. So the Greeks would have been, the Greeks would have known about these animals. I checked the historical ranges of the Indian rhino and it would have gone the western edge of the Indian rhino range would have been the eastern edge of Alexander's empire. So it's entirely possible that Alexander may have actually seen one of these things in person. But the fact that they made reference to it and they actually gave the name to the animal suggests that they probably had it or they were at least aware of it. So I think an Indian rhino kind of makes sense. Alexander, when he was off fighting on the banks of the... I should have looked this up before I started recording this video, but uh, on, on the banks of the, uh, I want to say Ganges River in Western India, or, or it might have been the Indus River. Anyways, uh, when he was fighting on the banks there, he might have come across these kinds of animals or may have come across somebody that knew about these animals and they gifted him one and then he brought one back to Alexandria and yes I do use a lot of the Arboretum cross hatch I don't know what that's actually called but the Arboretum squares in this so I knew that I was going to build the surround canopy out of the Arboretum cross hatches so over this royal box where the dignitaries would have overlooked the horse races I wanted to create something a little bit different so I covered it in fabric again in the Spartan red and yellow colors just to kind of tie everything together uh, thematically and it's unfortunate because what I wanted was those staircases those um, talk galleries I wanted them I wanted the people to actually be able to sit in those galleries and listen to the rhino talks going on, but this balcony is actually just too high for the people to be listening to the rhino talks all the way up there, which is a little bit disappointing. So in the end, I just decided to put one of the viewing icons there just so people will go up there. They will look at it just to spread people out. There is information about the rhinos in there that I will add later, but it is definitely there and for this viewing gallery those are just simple reeds that I put in those planters because I figured I could have gone with something a little bit more fancy but I think they would have just used whatever was readily available because those plants would have because they're under canopy would have to be replaced fairly frequently so I figured they just go with something that is available on the banks of the Nile rather than something more exotic that they might have to cultivate individually just for this. And one of the things that I'm really proud of for this hippodrome is, is that top level with the shadows of the Arboretum cross hatching and the, the nettle that is lining the entire front facade on the third story and the two sides on the second story. I think it just gives it a, a lightness of being, if that makes any sense. It kind of ties in the building with the surrounding foliage, or at least this foliage that I will be adding to it later, and it makes it less stark, it makes it less disruptive. And uh, I'm just really proud of a lot of the decisions I like. What, what do you think? Do you guys like the Hippodrome? If you like the Hippodrome, please 
give this video a like give it a thumbs up if you want to see more of the series please check out more of the series please subscribe just let me know let the youtube algorithm know that this is the kind of thing that you want to see because although it's not certainly going to be nearly one month between videos i do put a lot of time into these a lot more time into these videos for this series than i did uh Karzu toronto and I, wa I want to know that you guys actually enjoy the extra effort I put in. Because if I could just slap together, just to do a 25 minute video, and that gets, I don't know, 3,000 views. But yet I put hours and hours and hours into a video like this, and it only gets uh, 100 views because the algorithm doesn't share it. That's disappointing to me, and I'll stop putting this much effort into these videos. So... All that to say, please like, please subscribe, please comment. Just let me know, let YouTube know that you like these videos, and we'll see. And here I'm just uh, trying to explore different foliage options, and I figured the flowers just looked better. I wanted, I wanted the verticality of the cypress trees to really counterbalance the, the gargantuan, colossal nature of the Hippodrome. I mean, yes, we do have the columns, but otherwise, it's other than that, other than that it's a very squat building right it is far wider than it is tall so i thought the cypress would draw the eyes upwards and it would add a little bit more verticality to it if you'll pardon the 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 the, the analogy it's like why babe ruth the famous baseball player famously overweight baseball player for the new york yankees back in the day why he got them to add stripes verticals pinstripes to the uniform because it made him look taller so too, I think, would the cypresses make this building look taller, make it less squat, make it less ponderous, even. I don't know if it works for you, but it definitely works for me. Now we're starting to get into the, into the rhino, or you can actually see the rhino in the back there. When I was younger, when I was back in high school, I was a lot into fantasy. I still am, very much so. And I thought it would be really, really cool if we could have domesticated rhinos and used them in battle, specifically the African rhino, the ones with the two horns. And I actually did some math. An Indian rhino, and I'm using this statistics, an Indian rhino can run at a speed of about 55 kilometers an hour, which is roughly half of highway speeds. And they weigh about 2,200 kilograms, which is about 50% more than your average sedan. In fact, than your, uh, it's about twice as much as your average compact car. So being hit by one of these things at full speed is the equivalent of being run over by a car at highway speeds. And then add armor. And then add the focal point of going in, being gored by this horn. And then add the weight of the rider. And then add maybe it's going downhill. And then breed for size and strength. War rhinos would mess you up. Unfortunately, they're ornery and they're extremely territorial and they don't like cohabiting with anybody without other animals, let alone being domesticated by humans. So... I mean, that's obviously not going to happen. But just the imagining of what war rhinos could be. Rhino chargers would be. Oh, and if anybody asks, the reason the uh, at this point in time the water in the rhino exhibit is bright green is that I could easily tell where the boundaries of it were in, in order for me to place the other plants. Which is basically the same kind of plants that I put in the hippo habitat. But to me, that creates a, a continuity between exhibits, which I like. Anyways, back to war rhinos. And so here I am, realizing that war rhinos probably aren't going to be a thing. And then like two or three years later, I'm watching a movie, The 300, based on the Frank Miller graphic novel. And boom, lo and behold, there they are, the Persians riding war rhinos. 
And one part of me was like, this is so cool because I get to see the war rhinos in action. But another part of me is really angry because now if I ever write a book and I include war rhinos, people are going to assume that I copied that from Frank Miller. But I did not. This is just a case of great minds, I guess. I'm not trying to claim that I'm, my mind is as great as Frank Miller. But people just happen to think alike. So a little bit disappointed, but at the same time, very, very cool. And again, this is me just using the Arboretum, Arboreum, the cross hatching left. I just really like the aesthetic of that, especially when it's covered in ivy and greenery. Again, trying to tie it into the continuity of the of the, the superstructure, the roof, the ceiling of the hippo overlook balcony kind of a thing. So I don't really know what else I have to say in this episode. So just continue during the time lapse. We've only got another couple minutes left. But again, thank you very much for watching and uh, watch my follow up and I'll see you guys next time. is it for now at least i told you guys at the beginning this was going to be a massive project and yeah it's kind of big but we've worked on the indian rhinoceros habitat for now and i'm very very pleased with how everything is working out i do need to expand the shelter a little bit um prisha and our Arian, 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 they are a little bit upset about the lack of the hard shelter. It's mostly because these pillars, they don't like going anywhere near those pillars, which is fine, but, um, oh, yes, animal talks, look at this, because this is the Hippodrome, the place where the ancient Greeks and Romans listened, uh, watched horse races, I figured we could have people sitting on the benches and listening to the rhino talk. I think this is pretty cool, especially with the way that the shadows from the arbor cross hatching are going over top. I really like this. This is pretty cool, actually. I want to. No, I don't want to click on everything. I want to click on the guy. How do I just. Come on. Come on. Alright, we'll do it this way. I just want to make sure that my educators are all maximally trained. Well, not ma actually, you know what? Let's go with maximally trained. Let's get all my educators completely trained. That seems pretty good. Uh, there we go. Oh, there's some food. Just chucking the food down there. Yeah, I like how this looks. People can get a look down here, but it's through nettle, so it's not a great look, but it is still a look. They can go upstairs to where the the royals, not the royals and, and, and the elite would have been watching the horse races. 
starting down here, running all the way down to the and then coming back to the finish line. But now we just have some Indian rhinos. Oh, he's charging. Is he charging for the food? Ooh. Run, run, run. Where are you going, buddy? Yeah, he is running for the food. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. I like that. Um, but I'm also very proud of the facade. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. For how large this structure is, it could easily have been overwhelming. But the colors, the airiness of it, with the fact that the top story is is, is open... I... Uh, I really like this. I really like this. I'll get more statues as I fill in more animals across here. So there's going to be statues all along there. But it's very good. I was going to build some gardens this episode, but this has already been nearly a month since the previous episode. So I figured we'd just get her done. And there's so much more that we can do with this. We can probably fit another eight species in here. Um, I'm going to fill in some areas in between here with maybe a restaurant, maybe some other species, these kinds of things. And I'm definitely going to fill in all of this. Again, the plateau and the temple, and maybe connect to this plateau over here. I don't really know what the plan for that is, but I'm really liking how formal and structured this really looks. Just the, the continuous repetition of the same forms. Um, it, ends in elegant, it lends an elegance to it. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. But for now, just take some look at, uh, at some of the happy hippopotami babies, I might add. Actually, let's do that. Let's do that. Where's the baby hippopotami? There we go. There we go. Oh, it's pooping. There you go. There is Adesola, the baby hippo. Love it. Love it. And I think we've got another... Oh, we've got another baby hippo. We've got also a Dama. And they're, they're great. They are great. I'm still loving this habitat. Loving this. And I'm like... Just look at how massive that is. There's just something about it that just... Oh. And once all of this is filled in and, and built up with other... Other smaller buildings and... In gardens, this is going to look very, very cool. I'm very, very excited about how this is going. But anyways, this is it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please like, please subscribe, please comment. And uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what animals should come in next. Because um, people are loving this. And <laughs> we're making a lot more money now than we were. These rattles pretty much doubled our income, so we can almost do what we want now. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a great day, and I will see you all next time in Carzu, Alexandria.